Welcome to the first edition of Exploring the Dynaverse. Today we're going to be talking about induction. It's such a cool thing. It's kind of a buzzword right now, especially in the Dynaverse, because many of you are either looking at induction heaters or are thinking about buying one. Maybe you have one, maybe you have two, or maybe you've even tried to build one because there's a wide range of parts, components, kits, and other materials out there that make it relatively straightforward for someone that's familiar with electronics to build your own custom induction heater. So we thought maybe today we would discuss a little bit about what is induction heating. Let's take a look inside the Dynatech induction heater. First thing that you're likely to see is this large induction coil. Also, things to take note of is this capacitor. This functions almost like a rubber band. What we're really trying to do with induction is we're trying to set up an oscillation, not unlike the pendulum on your clock. We're charging a capacitor and we're discharging a capacitor, creating an electromagnetic field in our induction coil that is more or less going like this, except really, really fast. This induction heater is going to be oscillating somewhere in the neighborhood of about 300,000 times per second, or 300 kilohertz. If we look at our board again, we're going to see right here is where the power is coming in from the power supply. It follows these traces, and it comes to this first MOSFET switch. A MOSFET is a solid state switch that's not unlike your light switch, except it doesn't have any moving parts. When it receives a signal from another part of the circuit board, it either opens or closes, which allows the electrical current to flow or to not flow. Once we get past this switch, we now have the rest of our ZVS circuit, which includes a couple of MOSFETs, a few resistors, as well as a few diodes to make sure that our current only flows in the correct direction. And diodes basically function like check valves. So this allows us to set up that electrical oscillation, creating this pulsating electromagnetic field in this inductor coil. And so what happens then is the inductor coil then induces what are referred to as eddy currents in your VAP cap, in some sort of electrically conductive susceptor or material that's placed inside the induction coil that when an electromagnetic field interacts with it, it produces an electric current as that electromagnetic field is increasing and decreasing in amplitude. What happens then is these electric currents that are then flowing around inside of your induction coil, it gets hot because chances are what you're putting in there is not a superconductor. And anytime you flow a large amount of current through anything electrically conductive that has any sort of resistance, in other words, is not a superconductor, things warm up. And let's show exactly what's going on and some of the key characteristics of what makes induction heating really cool and also very useful. Now that we have power, you can see we've got our green LED lit up. We're going to start with this 2020M, we'll put it into our induction coil. There is a switch in the bottom of the coil that initiates the start of the resonator circuit. When I push down, we'll see the red LED light up. As I push this down, we're applying power and this MOSFET is allowing power to flow into this oscillator circuit. If I hold it down, it continues to oscillate, which is inducing those eddy currents and our cap clicks. What's really interesting about this is this cap is now over 400 degrees, or was when I took it out. This coil, when I'm touching with my finger, is barely warm. And this is the beauty of induction heating. Induction heating transfers energy through electromagnetic fields. It doesn't require direct connection or physical contact because we're not conducting or convecting heat. We're actually transferring it through an electromagnetic field that's oscillating in intensity and amplitude which is then inducing that electric current, which creates resistance as it flows through our conductive material and makes things hot. Let's try that again. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pulse our circuit every couple seconds. And what this does is this provides a much slower heat up and allows for more conduction to happen inside of our susceptor, which just happens to be a cap and a stainless steel tip on a 2020M. And as I get closer and closer to optimum extraction temperature, we hear the cap click, letting us know that we are right where we want to be. And still, when I touch the side of the induction coil, it's barely warm. Now, it will get hot with repeated use, but in general, if you're just using the induction heater for a quick heat up here and there, Nothing inside of here gets very warm. 
which is another thing that's really nice about the induction heaters, is we're able to convert a lot of the electricity directly into heat exactly where we want it.